This documentary is based on ending gang and youth violence in Lucian Borough. It has been put together by a group of young people to show our perspective on life in the borough. We met at Lucian Way Community Centre regularly to discuss, debate and consider what the biggest issues were and what we felt was important. The young people attended workshops and presentations where we designed questionnaires for the public and the professionals that we interviewed to have a wider insight on gang violence and antisocial behaviour. The issues highlighted in the documentary are strategy for safer neighbourhoods. One, one of the things that we've worked on particularly has been around uh, siblings. How you see us, youth and criminal justice. Because the way I dress and the way I walk around and my skin colour and that, they will try and victimise me, come to me all the time. Violent communities. Are you aware of any special measures that have been taking place to prevent the gang violence? I can't, I can't say I have. I'm not impressed with what I've heard, but I can't say I have. Family and the young offender. There's nationally a lot of research to say that there is a high correlation between young people who offend and young people who come from single family homes. Relationships. No, um, I don't think the relationship with the police is any good to be fair. Uh, from what I can see, it seems like a very kind of safe, uh, family oriented kind of community. I don't think they're threatened, I think they're probably f a fear of gang violence. It's like some of the youngsters aren't behaving the way they're supposed to be behaving, really. There's a group of lads that sit on the bottom of my stairs, and all they do is have cigarettes, cans of drink, and they just chit chat, chit chat, and no trouble to me at all. When I want to go up or down, they get out of the way, they call me auntie, respect, and all that. So, you know, people have the wrong idea, yes. No, it's not just us, it's not just us. It's all, it's, it's all the race, every, every single race, it's not, it's not just us. I, I don't think that there's a way to justify rioting, but it's like people completely disregarded that uh, in, uh, that, uh, that a man was murdered. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's about the balance, it's about understanding, it's not, not about justifying rioting, no. but it's about understanding why people have a dissatisfaction towards the system. Yeah. But you see, you use two very important words. Justification and understanding are not the same thing, right? Aren't they? You know, you don't you, to understand something is not to justify it. Mm, exactly. You know, but without understanding, we're nowhere. And I remember seeing on on um, on YouTube actually a, a film of a young guy who was standing in front of JD Sports. I don't know if you've seen this one. Yeah. So JD gets raided. Have you yeah. seen it? Anyway, this is the thing. I remember this is at the end of my street. I'm watching it on the computer. A lot of the young people I see every day, um, and there's a, people going in and going out, coming out with boxes of trainers. He's standing on the outside. Right? You can't see him, but you can hear him. He's a kind of commentary. Someone comes up to him and says, are you tempted to go in? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'd like to go in there. I'd like to go in there, but I'm a work in there. I can't go in there. And then that young woman comes up and says, "Oh, can you see? Can you believe how the young some of these people are going into that shop?" And they start talking, and she says, "Oh, well, yeah, I, I'm not going in there because I work with children, and my criminal records bureau check is precious to me." Right now, the thing that really caught my imagination is that almost in that one moment, there was a division being made between those people who had too much to lose to go in there and those people who perhaps didn't feel they had anything to lose. Mm. Do you think there's um, any particular reason why youth and gang violence are so prominent within the black community? I think it's, it's prevalent in all community. We've just been, our community has just been highlighted. Yeah, I remember I met one young a, a person who I was, I was, just, I was just trying to, to talk to. His mum asked me to see him. He said, I'm meeting the library. Mm. And I thought that would be a safe place for him because his peers aren't going to be in there. They aren't going to be in there. First of all, we've got to be very clear, gangs are not new. We're not trying to demonise the young people of today. Gangs have been around for centuries. Um, and that's very important for me in understanding what the problem is. Young people will be disproportionately involved in crime and gang activity. And that's been a fact for centuries. Young people like getting excited, young people like getting involved in things, they like pushing the boundaries. That's a fact. And what we've got to try and do is reduce the risks around their activities, whether it be gang, whatever, involvement in crime, so that we can get more young people safely through. 
at that stage of their life. So gangs aren't you. You can go, you know, New Cross, 1956. The New Cross boys were known as the biggest street gang in London at that time. A lot of it is uh, in the media. Put things into kids' heads, I think, really. Well, I think as long as Hollywood and Britain are prepared to spend millions, if not billions of dollars throughout the course of every year, uh, promoting films that show crime and violence as being part of the, the main theme of the film, how can that kind of diet go into people's minds? Don't forget, it's not a question of just watching the film, seeing it once and forgetting about it. They'll go and buy the DVD in Blu-ray or whatever it's called, and they'll watch it a hundred times in a year. So that way it's totally programming a person to believe that the, the remedy for any particular problem, whether it's economic disorder, like you owe mortgage on your house, or your, your family's breaking up for some reason to do with economics, then you're going to think that violence is the way out of it. You know, how can you keep programming society with that kind of violence and not actually get back that kind of violence? You reap as you sow, says the Bible. Have any special measures been put in place to prevent gang or force slash knife crime in the borough? We have something that's called the Serious Youth Violence Strategic Action Plan, okay. um, which is uh, a long-winded uh, way of saying that we've looked at this together, uh, the, the council, the police, other services that are involved, uh, and we did that in 2009. And uh, that was a plan that set out to try and reduce the existence of gangs in, in Lewisham. We target, if we can, the, the most prolific offenders, the, the, the people who are most involved. But we also uh, recognise that there are people who are on the fringes, who are at risk of being drawn in. I think the things that we've put in place have been positive. Um, we've seen a significant reduction in serious youth violence we've seen um, over the last year or so. So I think if you're looking at the hard stats, yes, we've had a positive um, impact there. I think obviously there'll be a f things that are not reported. And I think one of the things that we need to do is to continue to encourage people to, be, to report um, where there are issues around knife crime, etc. Um, one of the projects that we've got to kind of encourage young people to report crime um, particularly around serious youth violence, is the project we've got with King's College Hospital at the moment for victims of knife crime. Mm -hmm. So we've got an organisation called Red Thread that are based in the um, hospital with their youth workers on a number of days and on a response basis. And where there's a young person that's been stabbed or where we believe they're a, a victim of stabbing, Red Thread youth workers will go in there and see if they can get the young people to engage, see if they can get them to talk about what's happened because we don't want that person to go on to become a perpetrator and there's a clear link between people that are victims who then go on to become perpetrators of similar serious mm. violence. There's um, a strategy by the Safe Evolution Partnership which is the senior board that works with all the um, safety organisations in, in Lewisham. They have a programme which is um, based on, a, on a, a model called Pathways. Lewisham Borough, where we work, has been, um, uh, we are one of the 19, or so 18 now, gang boroughs, we're called gang boroughs, in other words, um, a borough that has a recognisable um, historical gang problem. And we're very lucky in Lewisham in that we've got a very successful unit called the Trilogy Plus unit, of which my colleague Sergeant Alderson leaves, leads, uh, and over the last three years they've been very, very successful in um, reducing what has been perceived to be a serious gang problem in Lewisham. So at the moment Lewisham sits in quite an enviable place as far as the gang problem is concerned and as far as knife crime is concerned. Well, we've got the Trilogy and Trilogy Plus units who are dedicated in their approach to tackling gang offenders and when I say tackling them not only is that as what the public see about arresting people but it's also recognizing that enforcement is by no means the only way forward and in fact if we if we went with enforcement as the only way forward we're going to fail absolutely do you think that the measures being put in place have been positive or counterpositive on the borough itself no I think it's um 
I think it's well thought out. It's not like um, it's not like looking for um, draconian measures, um, and also it's not just saying we we're gonna you know lock up all any young people that has any connection in any way, shape, or form. So I think it's very well thought out. It's um, it's um, having the different aspects of enforcement, support and community involvement is like um, looking at the issue holistically and not just looking at one aspect because um, I think if you just look at kind of draconian measures, uh, looking to lock everybody up and thinking that will solve the issue, well, um, clearly it, it, it won't. So I think it's, I think it's measured, it's holistic, and uh, any any um, any initiative where you enlist the help and support of the community, I think, is very very important. Yeah, we know that if an individual has been involved, perhaps they've been arrested or they're convicted, and there are younger siblings in that family, younger, it's mainly brothers, but it, it might be sisters as well, we know that they are more at risk than the, the population at large. Mm -hmm. So we, we focus on that. What can we do to try and make sure that uh, other young people in that same family don't get pulled in? If someone who's involved with a gang wants out, um, one of the things we know is that that can be really difficult to do. And in different ways, if, if someone comes to us or comes to the police and says, I want out, we'll work with them and try and give them the support that they need uh, to do that. Do people in the community feel threatened by gang violence? Some people do, I believe, but um, it depends on how you perceive gangs, I think. That's, it, it's more about perception. I think younger people, I know sometimes my, my eldest daughter, she has come back home saying, oh, there's, there's gangs outside, there's gangsters outside, and I'm letting her know, just because you see a group of black boys together or black men together, it doesn't mean they're a gang. So I think it's more about perception and, and how the word gang is perceived and how we perceive ourselves as well. What is your opinion of young people and gangs? Young people get involved in gangs for various reasons. Um, some of them feel they are not being heard, they're not being listened to, they're not part of uh, the mainstream. Uh, I've even heard it said that some of them believe that the gang is kind of the only family they've got. There's not a lot to be gained from being in a gang. Also, some of them join it, they, they feel they join in it for safety, but all the evidence suggests that they are more at risk, they're more likely to come to harm um, by gun and knife crime, they're more likely to meet uh, an untimely death at a very young age. And in general terms, there's no profit to be had from being in a gang in terms of getting a good education, preparing yourself for life as an adult, and uh, leading a productive uh, and responsible life as an adult. Do you think there's any particular reason why youth and gang violence are so prominent within the black community in the borough? There's so many reasons for that. I think it goes back to family, it goes back to how we see ourselves, and it goes back to role models as well. Because there's more black people in this borough, so that's why if you're going to go up to Richmond or them sort of areas, there's still going to be some sort of gun and knife, but it's not going to be predominantly black. I think that it should be viewed more. It is in both black and white. I remember I met this one, one uh, guy who's now in his second year of his undergraduate degree. He's out of prison now. When I first met him, he said, you know, when I was younger, 
my attitude was if you had something, if someone else had something, I would take it from them. I would just take it from them. I'd take it from them in the street, sometimes violently. I would take it from their house. Right? Um, but then he, he said this really sort of thoughtful thing. He said, you know, I realised the things that those people who had the, thing, the lives that I wanted couldn't be stolen from them. You couldn't take it. He's, and he said it in these terms, which are in, in, in quite sociological terms, really. He said, you know, I realised that what middle class people had, I couldn't steal. Because what they had was education, they had, a, they, had, they had the kinds of resources to secure a future that you can't steal. They can't be stolen. And it was through education that I think he's made a different future. You know. That person has come out of prison and he's not reoffended. Because you've got too much to lose. Why do you think that it's so many youth that have disinfractions with criminal justice system? Oh, we haven't talked about the police, have we? We need to talk about the police. Mm -hmm. Black people, and particularly young black people, are overrepresented in prison. In fact, it's true to say that if you took this, the proportion of the population, there are more black people, disparate or disproportionate, there are more black people in prison in Britain compared to, to America. There's a greater disproportionality, if that makes sense, mm. of the size of population and how many people are in prison in England and Wales, actually not Britain, in England and Wales, if we compare with America. You know, which is, I think, is a shocking statistic, you know. You know, and as a result of that, have experiences with the police which are negative ones, that don't foster trust. You know, there was all the, the you know, the, the, the important, um, politics around, you know, the murder of Stephen Lawrence and institutional racism in the police, but we've stopped talking about that in, in terms of the patterns of disproportional numbers of black, young black people are getting stopped and searched. We need to be careful about what we think is happening and What's what... The, the, yeah. Now, what I know is that the... the excuse me for using technical jargon, but the, the, the demographics of Lewisham are quite complicated and um, there is a higher proportion of younger people from black and minority ethnic backgrounds than there are older people and, and you only have to visit our schools to, to, to be aware of that. Yes. So um, the likelihood is if, that, if the majority of young people in Lewisham are from black and minority ethnic backgrounds then the majority of young people who are involved in gang violence, statistically, are probably also going to be. Would you say that there's a negative connotation attached to the word hoodies? Yes, definitely, definitely. They, they just assume it's a gang of youths that are wearing hoods and they're trouble, but that's not the case all the time. The term hoodies are recognised as being quite a modern creation in some ways. Um, when I was your age, we didn't have hoodies, we had hoodie tracksuits. And I remember seeing Muhammad Ali in a hoodie tracksuit. And for me, that was a very, very positive image. To be fair, hoodies is what I wear to the gym, and I'm always wearing a hoodie most of the time. So, you know, to me, that's just a cheap form of clothing, to be fair. Boys especially wearing the hoods on their heads for whatever reason. Maybe it's because they're cold or maybe they want to cover their faces for some reason or the other, cover their heads. When I say to you the word hoodies or you see the word hoodies, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Like mostly like gang related stuff. Yeah, that's it really. So you say that there's a negative, negative thing and yeah. annotation, notations behind the word hoodies? Yeah, that's it really, like just like bad backgrounds and like, or mostly like our hoodies, but like our hoodies like to be comfortable and stuff, but some other ways like if they come out in black hoodies and then like they've got bandanas and stuff like that then that comes in a way of like gang related stuff. The boys. Loads of boys. Loads of boys. Would, would you say that there's a negative attachment at, like, to the word hoodies? Yeah, yeah like black hoodies like they show intimidation or like, like within people that wear it innit? Well, yeah most people are scared of hoodies and that because um, it could be intimidating when you can't really see people's faces and that. Well, actually, when I hear the word hoodies, I can't help but think about um, gang violence. I also think warm, but I think gang violence. Basically, stereotypes, stereotypes, and that. Right. 
obviously people think because I'm wearing my hood I'm in a gang I'm related in, I'm, I'm doing violent stuff and that but it's just cold and that well, if I was to show you these pictures what, what would you think? are they hoodies? nah they're, they're not the, the usual type of hoodies that people have like around this area <laughs> these are hoodies you know obviously these type of hoodies yeah Ironically, they're, not, they're the ones not wearing hoods. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. No, none of those... None of those come to mind. No. Well, I do, I, well, no, not really. I don't think of dogs in hoodies or anything, no. Um, not really. Like, they are, but then, like, they're in, like, different contexts. It's probably hard for you guys to think of this, but I was young once. <laughs> Probably when I was your age, um, I used to think police were the enemy. Um, and um, as I've grown older, I've realised that most police officers are doing the job that they do because they want the community that they live in and work in to be a safer place. But they're doing it with all sorts of difficulties and pressures on them. And sometimes they don't do their job as well as they should um, and when that happens um, and that can be uh, being rude and aggressive to a young person that they've stopped who is going about their business perfectly reasonably and I've had too many young people tell me about that to think it doesn't happen I know it happens um, those police officers um, then create uh, a, a sense that uh, they're out to get young people and that then spreads and it gets worse because the next time that young person meets a, a police officer they will assume that they're going to get the same treatment. This is stop and search that, um, that process. Mm. Do you think it fuels um, gun and knife crime? I think it fuels, it fuels distrust yeah. amongst young people to the police. They, yeah. For the incidents that are really important they don't really stop and search mm. you. They stop and search you for the for little reasons, which I genuinely believe this sense of a kind of betrayal of, of a generation yeah. is that I think we've stopped worrying, I mean, my generation stopped worrying about that, yeah. you know, oh, and stopped asking the questions that were asked in our own generation about the damaging effect of exactly these kind of practices and exactly these kinds of, of forms of policing, you know, and, and stop and search as it was in 1981, the damage that it did. But it feels like we've stopped holding the police to account on these issues, you know, of the kind of routine, of the routine stop, of the, the routine stop, stop and search of young people, you know. I don't think that makes our communities safer, I don't think it makes the experience of being young safer. Stop and search is a very divisive topic, yeah. um, especially with young people. Um, and I think the new commissioner recognises that. And there is a lot of work going on in the police service now around stop and search. Now, everybody should be dealt with, but with respect. So respect, do you mean on the officer's point of view or on the young person? From both. You know, you know if I'm being honest, from, yeah, from both. From the police officer's side as well, yeah, and the young person's side. When things go wrong, it's much more likely to involve officers from uh, things like, the, that they have names like the Territorial Support Group, um, people who don't know the area. They're, they're, they're police officers who are brought in for a particular purpose um, and then they go away again. It's not the safer neighbourhood teams, it's not the officers who are working in Lewisham day in, day out. And uh, one of the first things I said to Bernard Hogan Howe, the new Metropolitan Police Commissioner, was that he needed to think about that because those officers who come in, cause trouble and go away again, leave the rest of us, police, young people and people like me, with a problem. The borough commander, who's chief superintendent, Niall on the borough, who I know has been speaking to the young mayor and various advisory groups where this question has been raised time and time again because young people on the street, it's in their minds. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, a, it's perceived as a, as a problem isn't it? 
So you might find a couple of not out of those searches, there might be a couple of articles, there might be a bit of drugs and that sort of thing. So that's the positive angle of it. We might have removed a knife that could possibly use the knife point robbery that can cause injury or cause a murder. Yeah, that's the positive side of those things. But the negative aspects of it, the huge amounts of people that have been searched and resent being searched, they're the people next time who might see something going on and think, should I bring up? No, I won't, because of the way I was treated last week. Mm. Yeah? Mm. So that's the danger. So it's a difficult balance, isn't it? So it's a, tw it's a t one, stop and search is one tool that needs to be used sparingly and where, uh, uh, and where the evidence or the suspicion shows that a search should be taken out. Mm. And when a search is conducted, People need to be polite, they need to go through the procedures, need to tell you, you know, need to go through what statute tells us um, that that search person should be told. You know, and I think one of the big problems of our time is that there aren't spaces for those people who are coming of age now to be heard and for those of, in my generation to listen mm. and think carefully about what it means for you, how different it is for you to come of age now. I'm, I'm convinced that the majority of police officers in Lewisham, in London, um, feel the same way I do about young people, that they, they want our young people to do well, but there are some who have a completely different approach and they create that notion because it, you've only got to have one bad experience mm -hmm. and you're going to assume that it's going to happen every time you meet a police officer. Most young people, most of the young people I know have a good relationship with the police and most of the young people I know are able to trust the police. Obviously there are a lot of problems about between them but I think the police sometimes make too much um, against the uh, young people. That's why I think they are tempted to, to do bad things. The police at some levels interact and communicate with the community. I do think they could do a lot more and I do think they need to look around the community and see what uh, important resources are there. I don't think the relationship with the police is any good to be fair. One, because they don't really show respect to none, to none of the young youth, so I don't know how they, like, how they want to see respect back. I think it's really important that um, police officers actually learn to respect the community. A lot of the work they have to do is not easy, it can be difficult, it can be problematic. But Police officers know that when they volunteer to, to do the role. So it's about valuing and respecting all the community and also being careful that they do not display prejudices in the members of the community that they interact and uh, communicate with. But I think in a way there's a connection between vulnerability in gang violence. I mean, I think the two things we really need to talk about is vulnerability and fear. There's a clear correlation between young people who've had complex lives, complex backgrounds, and those young people who then go on to offend for a variety of reasons. So I think last year for Lewisham Young People, so Lewisham looked after young people who are based across the country, so they're not necessarily resident in Lewisham Borough, but nationally. Um, those Lewisham young people, about 13% 13 13 of those young people committed an offence. So for some of those it's a, a first warning, it's a reprimand. For other young people it was a more serious offence where they got a court disposal. Um, some of those young people were new young people to the system and some of those young people were young people who um, we'd known previously who may actually have come into the system um, because of their offending. So it was recognised at that point that their parents couldn't put the boundaries around them to prevent them from further offending and causing harm to others. If children ain't brought up right, then I think that makes a, a difference. What is it that those young people who are getting drawn into uh, either uh, sort of so-called gangs, or, or, or what's it, what, what is it that that, that involvement is a response to you know what is it that picking up a knife or a gun gives that young person you know, well it can it's empowering in a certain kind of way you know in, in a destructive way maybe 
But there's something about that which I think is a, is a, is a response to a sense of vulnerability. Would you say that there's a connection between single parent households and people in gangs? Um, no, I just think there's nothing for the youths to do. When I was growing up, they had youth centres. We could go and play table tennis and all our gangs would meet up there. But these days, in London, they don't have that. The role of a parent, I believe, is to demonstrate best behaviour to their children. Single parents do good and bad jobs as well as joint parents, I really. I, I think personally, like, so... Um, I, I wouldn't say it's gang-related, no, definitely not. There's nationally a lot of research to say that there is a high correlation between young people who offend and young people who come from single family homes. I think what we see in Lewisham, and I can speak anecdotally from the cases that we have and the young offenders that come through, is there are young people who come from very complex backgrounds. It's not necessarily that they have a single parent family at the moment, but it might be that they have a number of brothers and sisters, that their families have remarried, mm -hmm. um, that they're living in situations where they're living with their aunts, their uncles, they're living with extended families, then private fostering arrangements. So I think the numbers of single parent families that we have in Lewisham, again, just anecdotally from the, my database, suggests that there are complex families and the numbers of single parent families is probably lower than 70%. Mm -hmm. But I think we see an increasing number of complex families through our young people. There is a myth that the, typi the typical family uh, that people joke about, sort of 2.4 children, and, um, and they, they live in a, a nice three-bedroom house, and there's mum and dad, and dad goes out to work, and mum stops at home and looks after the children. Life's not like that. Um, I'm struggling to think of anybody that I know who meets that stereotype. Mm -hmm. But when you're working for the Daily Mail or, or whoever it is, you want somebody to point the finger at. Yeah. Um, and they will, in, in this context, they'll point the finger at single parents. In other contexts, they'll point the finger at people who are receiving welfare benefits. Um, there are fantastic single parent families, parents. There are dreadful single parents. Uh, I'm afraid the media, um, they, they look for easy solutions and there aren't any. The media look at lots of different areas when it comes to young offenders. And I'm not sure if you can remember the last positive story you heard about young people who defended giving back to the community, mm. young people, um, rates of reoffending reduced. Um, the media focus very much on particular areas. Mm -hmm. So we look at, obviously, particular groups of young people who offend. We look at lone parents. We look at a number of areas. Um, it is one of many areas that the me media like to focus on. I know that many people think there's a straightforward relationship, or that they, they believe there's a relationship. Um, I think there's something that, there's a role that the gang provides, or that those networks or peer groups provide, that are obviously they're fulfilling something of a lack in that, young, in that young person's life, providing a sort of structure, some kind of structure of, of support. Um, and it may be that that structure is responding to a, to a lack in, in a family. Or, you know, but to be honest with you, I, I think I'm suspicious of those straightforward. And again, that's narrowing down, I think, rather than broadening out. 15% of, of, of the British prison population now is black. You know, not th not almost three percent of the British population. There's a massive overrepresentation of, of black people in prison, largely young men. Yeah. Um, we also know that there's a, a, a relationship between poverty and criminality. It doesn't mean that you know poor people, by definition, something inside them in their culture makes them criminal, mm. but poverty criminalises. Poverty criminalises. It's that straightforward. It's almost a sociological law. In every uh, every developed society, um, the, po the populations of the prisons are disproportionately poor and they're disproportionately black and, black and brown. Mm. There is definitely a relationship between um, single parents and you know um, um, the whole gang violence thing. Because if it, if someone is not responsible, if someone is not uh, if, the, if the parents don't do their job to bring the child up in a proper way, then um, 
there's a possibility that the person will go into gang violence when they grow up. I don't think that there is any connection between somebody coming from a single parent family and then being more likely to be involved in youth violence. Mm. On the other hand, um, if someone comes from a home where uh, the, the parenting isn't good, mm -hmm. they are going to be much more vulnerable to get involved in those things. Um, so uh, I suppose what I'm actually saying is it depends on the nature of the single parent family. Uh, and I get really upset when I hear people blaming single parents who are often doing fantastic jobs. Um, but what I do agree with is that poor parenting puts children at risk and it's, it's one of the things that we try to focus on as well. I work in a school myself and a lot of it comes from the parents and the siblings so yeah. the schools and the, and the governments can only do so much. It is parents as well. They need to be educated and, and keep a tight lid on their children. As a young person I feel that projects like this give young people something positive to focus on in their future, how do you think they'll commission similar projects like this? Uh, to be honest with you, whenever I get invited to involve, be involved in something like this, whatever else I'm doing, I put to one side because, in a way, being in this conversation that we've been in, um, I can see from your point of view is a ben it will be of benefit. And the things that we've said before about the importance of young people being heard is such a priority now. So I think in more projects like this, they should put more money into more projects like this. But it's, it's not only benefiting you, actually. Uh, it's benefiting me. And people like me, in the sense of, of, of what it will do in our own thinking about trying to, to bridge what I think is a generational divide. You know, a divide. A divide of misunderstanding, um, a, da a divide that involves the pushing of blame from the older to the younger. You know, I think. So in a sense, as much as I think it's, I'm glad to hear you say that, and I wish there were more, um, what's at stake is not just to, for you to be at it, to, to, um, to have your voice, to, to, to express yourself, but also what's at stake for us is to hear what you have to say and to think differently as a result. Things are probably looking brighter these days, like there are projects and so on and um, yeah, there's, there are more things for young people to get involved with but it's just up to them to find them and it's up to the council and the government to make these more available to these people. Mentoring is very, very important um, but it's got to be the right mentors. Yeah. There's a lot of men, you know, I think everybody who does mentoring has it, does it from a uh, positive perspective. Um, but you've got, to, you've got to be able to relate to young people, relate to their situation. Mm. Bring some national service back and then maybe it might deal with it all. There isn't enough for them to do. Government is letting them down. One. Look at them cuts. It's going to get worse. Because everything we do is trying to reduce the violence. You're not going to eradicate gangs. Okay? You know, anybody who says that look back over the centuries, we've never achieved it yet. You know? And young people coming together it can be a positive thing. We're training um, social workers to raise awareness about the sorts of factors that can trigger young people to offend and therefore be arrested and be charged. We're also doing a lot with foster carers at the moment. So we've got a training programme for all Lewisham foster carers and all agency foster carers who support Lewisham young people. 55% of the young people that we approached welcomed us and say, yeah, I actually want some help. And that help may just be they wanted what we call a mentor to talk to them. With other young people, you know, it can be remove them from the situation they're in, remove their family from the situation they're in. Because young people are involved in gangs, their family can become involved in it, totally innocently. That's, that's our aim, is to try and get young people, you know, off-road, as they call it, yeah. and back into sort of mainstream life. So you've got the enforcement side of it, but that's not going to work on its own. That's going to be done in partnership with the um, 
diversion strategy. We need to educate the children more in the schools maybe, you know, put the money back into it that way and then the children will realise that, you know, they're just ruining their life before their life's even begun. I think it would be very, very beneficial for young people to look at other aspects of employment and trading. There is a, a programme and a piece of work called the MARAC, the Youth MARAC, and it's uh, for victims of serious uh, youth violence. The MARAC is a, a multi-agency partnership meeting that comes together where young people's cases are discussed to make sure that we've got the most effective package in place for those young people and their families so that it prevents those young people from becoming offenders but also makes sure that the, the parents, the, the families, the siblings have got a support package in place. I mean, I think in a way that the solutions that are required are dialogue and having sort of the conversations that we're having and the kind of thinking that we're doing together now. Um, but I also think a kind of conversation that's going on amongst young people, for young people. I think that, that thing about we started, we were talking about before about, you know, in the sense from young people hitting out their, at, at their mirror image. That's the thing that I think is, is such a kind of, uh, is a warning and also uh, the most tragic dimension of all of this. I know anecdotally people talk about um, youth clubs and spaces being closed and I know um, the facility by Connections was very, uh, was, was quite valued. I think we have to be mindful about the change in behaviours and the, the changes in society. So whereas I remember when I first came to work in Lewisham, there were, you know, there was certainly Lewisham Way Youth Centre, there was the um, um, Ladywell Road. There, there were a number of, of bases for young people. But I think in this day of information communication technology, young people doing different things in different ways, I think we need to take that into account. And so, for example, sometimes I hear there's nothing for the young people to do in the summer holidays, there's nothing. And I know, I'm not saying it, it deals with every need, but certainly through the local council, they, have a, they always have a programme that can be accessed. Maybe some people just don't have the right access to these things. This filmmaking you're doing now, that's a good contribution you know, and a good indicator of the fact that not all young people are criminalised, you know? Mm. We, we should really be aware that we shouldn't put young black men into that compartment and say, if they're hanging out on the street, they're a problem. They're not. Some of these drug dealers, some of these robbers, some of these people committing serious offences, the organisation, the effort they're putting into their criminal activities is more than people running small firms, you know? If you can just challenge that energy and put it into a, um, a positive area, we're going to achieve great things. I think a lot of it is down to just pure boredom, you know, and there's not enough for kids to do these days. You know, I think um, the, the youth benefits are stretched to breaking point basically where, where there's nothing you know they're, they're, perform, they're performing miracles with pittance are you aware of any special measures that have been put place to prevent gang violence personally no i don't know i know there's even what you're doing now it's very good it's very constructive it's informative so it's about communities working together people working together and people thinking as well you've got to think got to think about what you're putting out there as well especially the older people how would you bring young black people into university like where you teach that has to do with trying to make the university a welcoming place a place where young students of any background but particularly young black people feel comfortable I think um, the whole gang violence thing, um, it starts from the individual, the person, yeah, the people itself. The change has to come from inside. Yeah, so it, it's not, it's not, um, it, it doesn't have to do with the justice system. They are doing everything they can to, uh, to like, 
make everything okay for everyone but the in individuals have to like take responsibilities for themselves and you know do the right thing the only way to address that feeling of vulnerability is is i think is to try and create the conditions and with their young people where those young people can see a future you know a future that can be invested in that doesn't involve um, the kind of destructive things that we're talking about what we're trying to do uh, and by we I mean Lewisham Council um, is to take the money that we've got and figure out uh, the way we can get the most out of it and increasingly what we'll be doing is trying to uh, create funds that allow projects exactly like this to happen um, that's quite difficult because it means we're going to have to look at all the money we're spending in, in relation to youth uh, provision and uh, change the way we do it, uh, partly because we're really short of money. Um, but we think that if we do that, particularly if we do that by involving young people and talking to them and hearing I think things like you've just said, that this is a project that you feel is making a difference, that we might at the end uh, be able to spend... Uh, potentially even less money than we do now but actually get more out of it but that's something that we're going to begin to do over the next uh, few months uh, and a part of it will be driven by knowing that projects which engage young people themselves uh, work much better than ones where it's just old fogies like me telling them what to do. What you have seen in this documentary is that gang and youth violence are not new and have a history that goes back hundreds of years. However, as young people, we realise that some things have to be changed to tackle this problem now. And the best way to do this is for the statutory services to allow young people to voice their opinions and speak for themselves. This film marks the beginning of the process in Lucian and we hope when you see young people on the street, you don't stereotype them as criminals and troublemakers. Most of us have a mindset for success and happiness in our future. All the young people who was involved in the project wish to thank everyone who supported us and believed in us to make this possible. We, we can, can speak, speak for ourselves. ourselves.